Hey there, traders. Welcome or welcome back to the Caffeinated Traders Lounge, where the coffee's always hot and the markets are even hotter. Whether you're new here or one of the regulars, grab your favorite brew and get ready to break down the latest economic data that's going to either mess with or make you money in the Forex and stock markets this week. If you love staying ahead of the game like we do, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you never miss a beat. Every Sunday, we'll dive into the latest releases, covering the dollar, euro, pound, Aussie, loonie, and the yen. Because let's be real, who doesn't love a little currency showdown, right? All right, let's get into it. The U.S. is giving off some real mixed signals. The PMI is saying manufacturing is struggling harder than a Monday morning without coffee, but services are still hanging in there. Inflation's slowing down, but not enough to make the Fed flip yet. Job markets showing cracks, with a tiny rise in unemployment and consumer sentiments all over the place. Basically, the dollar might lose some steam, but the services sector could keep things afloat for now. The Eurozone, especially Germany, is looking rough. PMIs are below 50, which means contraction. Germany is flirting with a recession harder than a trader eyeing that one more trade before bed. The biggest worry? Manufacturing is taking a nosedive, and it's dragging the euro along with it. Even business sentiment is down. So, don't expect any euro strength parties soon. Good news, bad news situation in the UK. Growth forecasts are up, which is great, but inflation? It's sticking around like that annoying last customer at closing time. Consumer sentiment is tanking, but retail sales are having a weird bounce-back moment. It's like the UK can't decide if it's in a good mood or bad, and traders are left trying to figure out which side of the bed the pound will wake up on. Australia is giving us whiplash. Inflation dropped, but only because the RBA's been hitting it with rate hikes. Core inflation is still chilling in the danger zone. The job market's cooling down, and the RBA is playing hard to get with rate cuts. Traders are betting we might see some rate relief soon, but until then, the Aussie dollar could be swinging like a pendulum in a breeze. Canadian GDP was up in July, but don't get too excited. Growth probably stalled in August. The BOC is eyeing a rate cut, and the loonie is doing a little shuffle downwards as a result. Oil is still doing its thing, but manufacturing's not looking too hot. Basically, expect some chop in the CAD, especially with the BOC hinting they might ease up on the gas. Japan's PMI showed manufacturing is having a rough time, like, third straight month of contraction rough. But services are crushing it thanks to wage hikes. Inflation's steady, and the Bank of Japan is playing it cool after years of negative rates. The yen's gonna be volatile, but with inflation stabilizing, Japan could stay on the cautious but steady path, at least for now. All right, let's connect the dots. We've got a lot of moving pieces, but how do they affect each other? Let's break it down. Starting with the USD, the cooling inflation and slight uptick in unemployment might make you think the dollar's about to get weaker. But hold your horses. The services sector is still solid, and that's a huge chunk of the US economy. Now, if the dollar loses its footing, that means more breathing room for other currencies, right? Not exactly. The euro is tripping over itself with Germany basically falling off a cliff, economically speaking. So, even if the USD weakens, the euro might not be able to take advantage. The pound's a wild card. It's sitting in a love-hate relationship with inflation. Inflation loves sticking around, but the pound hates it. The UK's upgraded growth forecast could give GBP a temporary boost, but with inflation still too high, there's a risk of the BOE tightening further, which could be bullish for the pound. But mix in the cratering consumer sentiment, and you've got some serious whiplash potential. Meanwhile, if the USD weakens, GBP could gain, but only if it can outpace the mess in Europe. Now let's check out the AUD. If the USD weakens, the Aussie might get a boost, especially if China throws more stimulus into the mix. But if the RBA keeps playing chicken with rate cuts, the AUD could still lose ground in the short term. Plus, Australia's got its own labor market drama and inflation that's stickier than honey on toast. For the CAD, it's all about oil, GDP, and rate cuts. If the BOC pulls the trigger on a cut, the loonie's likely to take a hit, especially if the USD weakens less than expected.
but if oil prices surge, that could bail the CAD out. Oil has a funny way of being Canada's knight in shining armor. Then there's the yen. The JPY tends to move inversely to risk sentiment. So if all this uncertainty keeps pushing traders into safe haven assets, the yen could actually benefit. But Japan's mixed economic data, with manufacturing lagging and services holding up, makes it tricky to call. If the USD weakens, the yen could see some strength, but not necessarily enough to create a solid trend. All right, drumroll, please. Let's wrap this up with some conclusions. We're likely looking at some bearish vibes for the USD, but don't count it out completely. Services and housing could keep it stronger than expected. The euro is the weakest of the bunch, no question. Germany's dragging it down hard, and there's not much to stop the bleeding in the short term. The pound's in a weird spot. If inflation stays high, we could see some strength, but it's fragile. Watch for any changes in Bank of England policy and consumer sentiment. The Aussie dollar might get tossed around by global factors like China and inflation. Near-term chop seems likely, but a rate cut could weaken it further. The loonies tied to oil and the BOC's rate decisions. If rates get cut, expect the CAD to lose ground, unless oil can step up and save the day. The yen could get a boost from safe haven flows, especially if global uncertainty rises. But Japan's mixed data makes it a tough one to pin down. All right, so let's talk about the strongest and weakest currencies for the week. Our strongest currency for the next week might just be the pound, with inflation pressures and a surprise bump in growth expectations. But watch out, it could turn on a dime. The euro, on the other hand, looks like the weakest. Germany's dragging down the whole ship, and there's little hope on the horizon for a turnaround. So that's it for this week's currency overview. Thanks for sticking around. I hope your coffee was as strong as these market moves. If you enjoyed this breakdown and want to stay wired for more, we're here every Sunday to give you a head start on the week ahead. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and hit subscribe to never miss out. Join the Caffeinated Traders Lounge, where we brew up fresh insights every week to help you stay ahead of the game. Until next time, stay caffeinated, stay trading, and I'll catch you in the next one.